There is no difference between our diamond and the naturally occurring diamond. Everything that occurs in the ground can be duplicated in the laboratory. The ice grown in your refrigerator versus the ice that occurs outside are identical. And it's that same simplistic analogy that applies to all of the crystals that we grow. It's not kiwi zirconia, it's not moissanite. Those are simulants of diamond that don't have the same chemical, physical, and optical properties of a naturally occurring diamond, whereas our diamond does. People assume we're making the perfect gemstone, and we're not. We lose probably 90% of everything we grow because it doesn't come up to the quality standards which enable us to make the gemstone. We control the gemstone's growth through computers and temperature and what have you. Nature still grows the crystal. There is an environmental impact that many people are taking into consideration today. The mining processes for colored gemstones and diamond are pretty hard on, on the earth. In the mining of gemstones, you don't get involved in bringing in chemicals. In the case of diamond, some of the original mines in Africa are almost a mile deep, half a mile wide, just huge holes in the ground. And unfortunately, those countries don't require the mining companies to repair the earth. Uh, most of the diamonds mined today are mined in areas that uh, there is no real conscious effort to take care of the earth. There's also the affordability factor. In the case of our diamonds, in the pink and the blues and the yellows, these are very expensive and natural hundreds of thousands of dollars per carat and not very available, which is why the price is so high. Now, we don't have a mass-produced product. I mean, it is still difficult to do what we do, and we're limited in what we can do, but it's definitely less expensive than the natural. After we've grown the crystals, cut the crystals in our factories, and designed the jewelry, and it reaches the consumer, many things can happen to gemstone jewelry and even diamond jewelry. Diamond is extremely hard, the hardest known substance to man. But there's a difference between hardness and toughness and how brittle something is. And you can chip diamonds quite easily by knocking it on a table. What we have done is to protect the consumer against that type of damage. I'm not guaranteeing you can't break one of our stones, but if you should ever break one of our stones, we will stand behind it and replace it 100%. That is something not found in the natural gemstone or diamond industry ever. This business of created gemstones was started by Carol Chatham back in 1936. He was a young man with a dream, love of chemistry, and he accomplished something that no one before him had in growing crystals that duplicated what occurs in nature. And it was not an overnight success. It was a very long and tedious uh, research project, beginning probably when he was 15 years old. And he stuck with it for over 10 years before he saw his first crystal that could be identified as emerald. Crystal growth is an art, much the same way growing grapes to make wine. When you have achieved that success in the gemstone, then we had to take that raw gemstone and turn it into something that released the inner beauty of the stone. And making jewelry is an art. You must be have a creative soul to accomplish what we've done today in the formation of the look of the jewelry, the balance of the size of the stone and the color, uh, the amount of metal we use, all of this is an art form that we think we've accomplished successfully. Carol Chatham began his research in 1932, 33, accomplished growing emerald in approximately 1938, 
And it wasn't until 1959 that he accomplished the next important gemstone synthesis, and that was in Ruby in 1959. After I joined the company in 1965, we began to investigate different colors of sapphire. We were successful in growing blue sapphire, orange sapphire, and then yellow sapphire. We grow alexandrite, which is a color-changed chrysoberyl, which is extremely popular today. And we also grow white and black opal. In 1994, I began investigating the processes that were available to grow diamond. 1996, we released our first diamonds to the industry and have since gone on to produce blue diamond, yellow diamond, and pink diamond. 